Good day, Batang IS. Our topic for the fourth quarter is all about the gas loss. But before we proceed with the discussion of the gas loss, let us first revisit the properties of gases. This presentation was prepared by Mrs. Minerva M. Ramos, and I am going to present it to you on her behalf. So these are the learning objectives. At the end of the discussion, participants are expected to describe gases, explain the postulates of the kinetic theory as applied to gases, and relate how these postulates account for the properties of gases. Gases are all around us. We live in a sea of gases. Air is a mixture of several gases. Without air, no life on Earth would be possible. Gases, unlike other fundamental states of matter like solids and liquids, are remarkable for having molecules that are widely separated from one another. Thus, they can move freely at rapid motion. It is for this reason that colorless gases become invisible to us. These gases have common properties which are summarized as follows. First, gases can completely fill up their container. Gases have no definite shape and volume. They spread throughout the container and assume the shape of the container. The second one is that gases can be mixed readily, completely, and evenly. Gases diffuse easily. Diffusion is responsible for the spread of others, like the scent of the perfume, aroma or smell of food, like adobo, fried fish, coffee, even gasoline in garage, etc. The third one is that gas is compressible and expandable depending on the pressure. Wide spaces between gas particles make gases compressible and expandable depending on the pressure applied to it. Gases expand when pressure is reduced and compress when pressure is increased. This may be observed by the twisting, bending, and reshaping an inflated balloon. The fourth one, gases have less density than other states of matter. Gases have very low density as compared to liquids and solids. For example, air has a density of only 0.00130 gram per milliliter as compared to water which has 1 gram per milliliter, and aluminum, which has 2.70 grams per milliliter. Density is a useful property of matter. As a general rule, a less dense substance rises, while a more dense substance sinks. For example, air at 20 degrees Celsius has density of 1.205 kilogram per cubic meter while pure oxygen has a density of 1.331 kg per cubic meter. Thus, pure oxygen will sink below and displace air. The next one is gases have mass. The mass of the gas can be found through the process of weighing. The mass of the gas can be obtained by subtracting the mass of the container in which the gas is present from the total mass. Gases exert constant uniform pressure in all directions. Pascal's law states that the pressure of a gas or a liquid exerts force equally in all directions against the wall of its container. The force is measured in terms of force per unit area or pounds per square inch or PSI. This law is for liquids and gases at rest and neglects the weight of the gas or liquid. Though gases differ in chemical properties, they do behave similarly. How gases behave can be explained through the gas laws using four macroscopic properties such as volume, pressure, temperature, and number of moles. Molecules of gases occupy space. It may be proven when gas fills up its container. Volume which is one of the measurable properties of the gas, is denoted by the symbol V or capital letter V. Its international system of units is in liters. It can also be expressed in milliliters, cubic centimeters, cubic meter, and cubic decimeters. 
One liter is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters. One milliliter is equivalent to one cubic meter. And one cubic meter is equal to one million cubic centimeter. Thus, one liter is equal to one cubic decimeter, is equal to 1,000 milliliter, and is equivalent to 1,000 cubic centimeter. When you inflate a balloon, it expands because molecules of gases strike the walls of the balloon, causing a pressure on it. Pressure is the next important measurable property of the gas, which is denoted by the symbol P or capital letter P. Pressure of the gas is the force exerted by the gas per unit area. It depends on the kinetic energy of the molecules. As the kinetic energy in turn depends on temperature. The pressure is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas in equation. Pressure is equal to force over area or pressure is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity over the area. Its international system of unit is Pascals. Named after a scientist Blaise Pascal, this unit is equivalent to a force of one newton acting on one square meter. Other units of pressure are atmosphere, millimeter of mercury, tor, bar, kilopascal, and pounds per square inch. One atmosphere is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury and is equivalent to 760 tor and is equivalent to 101.325 kilopascal. An instrument known as barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure. A manometer, on the other hand, is used to measure gas pressure other than the atmosphere. The temperature of a gas is denoted by the letter T. The temperature of a gas depends on the kinetic energy of the gas. Gases expand when temperature is increased. The temperature of the gas is generally expressed in Kelvin, Fahrenheit, and centigrade or degree Celsius. Temperature is measured with the help of a thermometer. Though we often use the Celsius degree when dealing with the temperature involving gases, we always express it in Kelvin temperature. Thus, we need to convert Celsius value to Kelvin. This unit was named after Lord Kelvin, a Scottish physicist who has identified the lowest attainable temperature known as absolute zero, with a value of negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Hence, the Kelvin temperature scale. To convert Celsius to Kelvin, we use the equation Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273.15. To convert the Fahrenheit to Celsius, we use the formula degrees Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times the quantity of degrees Fahrenheit minus 32. To convert the Celsius into Fahrenheit, we use the equation degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to 9 over 5 times Celsius plus 32. The amount or number of moles. The amount of gas or mass is another measurable property of gas. The mass of the gas is related to the number of moles of the gas. The mass of the gas is generally expressed in kilograms per grams. For example, we have here the oxygen. An oxygen has an atomic mass of 16 times 2 because we have here two molecules of oxygen. That will give us 32 grams per mole of the O2. The nitrogen, on the other hand, has 14 um, atomic mass times 2 is 28 grams per mole. One mole is equivalent 
to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. That is the Avogadro's number. The mass of the gas can be found through the process of weighing. The mass of the gas can be obtained by subtracting the mass of the container in which the gas is present from the total mass. Scientists have observed some activities involving gases. From their observations, they formulated generalizations that explain the behavior of gases and are summed up in the kinetic molecular theory of gases. The behavior of gases is determined by the behavior of its individual particles. The kinetic molecular theory was formulated using a simple model. In 1870, scientists were able to make a model of an ideal gas or a theoretical gas. The particles of an ideal gas behave consistently and in a predictable manner. It serves as a basis which attempts to explain the behavior of real gases. According to the kinetic molecular theory of gas, a gas has the following characteristics. First, the gas contains very tiny particles, each of which has mass. Gases, like any other states of matter, consist of very tiny particles, each of which has mass. Gases are most likely empty space because of a wide distance between these tiny particles, thus making gases compressible and have low density. The density of gases varies with changes in temperature and pressure. Next, gas particles move rapidly in straight lines. Particles travel constantly and in random directions until they collide with random body. Gases diffuse very rapidly that allows two or more gases to mix readily when combined. And the next one is because of the wide spaces between gas particles, the forces of attraction between them are negligible. If gases do in fact consist of widely separated particles, then the observable properties of gases must be explainable in terms of the simple mechanics that govern the motion of the individual molecules. The KMT makes it easy to see why a gas should exert a pressure on the walls of the container. Any surface in contact with a gas is constantly bombarded by molecules. Number five, collisions between gas particles or their container are perfectly elastic. Gas particles collide with each other or with the walls of its container but do not lose their kinetic energy. Instead, it is only transferred to the lower energy particle and will continue to move. In short, energy is conserved an elastic collision of gas particles, meaning to say that the collisions are not sticky. And number six, all gases have the same average kinetic energy at a given temperature of gas. The average kinetic energy of a gas particles is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas. This means that the gas particles might have higher kinetic energy at a higher temperature and vice versa. Notice that the term average is very important here. The velocities and kinetic energies of individual molecules will span a wide range of volumes and some will even have zero velocity at a given instant. This implies that all molecular motion would cease if the temperature were reduced to absolute zero. The particles described above may appear as a molecule. All molecules have the same average kinetic energy at the same temperature regardless of their masses. Ideas about the movement of molecules were developed through the kinetic molecular theory. One of these movements is the translational motion a possible motion of molecules from one place to another. 
other known movements are rotational motion and vibrational motion. There you have it, Batang IS. Those are the things that we have to remember about the properties of gases. I hope that you have learned something new today. Goodbye and God bless!